Anthony and I'm the psychic. Hey, and I'm Dr. Pat and I'm Dr. Pat. And here we are with the psychic and the doc. And we've got a great show for all of you today. Um, what we're talking about is talking about talking about where we are and talking about without shying away from the fact that we are in times which we probably couldn't predict we'd be in. And what is it that's available to us? to guide us, to move us in directions, to help us, to relieve stress. What is it that could literally pinpoint to us how to move forward, when to move forward, and what to do? And Mark, you're going to bring some interesting people to the conversation, aren't you? Yes, I am. We're going to be reaching out with to the other side. And so when people call in, I'll be connecting them with loved ones in spirit and the your collective and when i say collective what i mean is that spirits are like drops of water and so when we we die our soul our spirit leaves our body leaves our brain plunges into the eternal sea of consciousness now we remain individuals but we're interconnected with this collective and the reason that i'm bringing all this up is that when you connect with spirits of your loved ones, you're connecting with the collective consciousness. And you know, Dr. Pat, you brought up an um, interesting point just now. We said how we're living through um, unsettling times and changing times. Yeah. And the beauty of this show is that it has a linear continuity to it. Because when we did the show for the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, the astrologer that we ha had on, uh, Kevin Casey from Body, Mind and Soul in Houston, he said that this was the sign of, of great change. And that basically the world, the, the life that we know is being deconstructed and then reconstructed on a new paradigm. And then our New Year's Eve show, we had Nancy Evans Bush, the foremost, the world's foremost expert on what's known as the hellish NDE, the distressing NDE. And what she was telling our audience is that a distressing experience, which includes a distressing spiritual experience, can actually open doors to a new phase of our life. And what we are seeing now are things that both Nancy and, and Kevin were discussing. And so that's what this show tonight uh, is about on The Psychic and the Doc, is how to get through these unsettling times and with help from the other side and Dr. Pat too. Yeah, and you know, let's talk about this because I want to talk about how we're describing these times. I want to just take a moment because it, unless you are totally unplugged from the news and the television or whatever it is you're plugged into, 
um, some of us can't even do that without having a pop up pop up like on our computer or on our phone. I, I really have to give my phone to Jessica and just say, you got to you, you got to stop these pop up things. Um, we can't help but being attached to an energy of real life things that are happening in the world. And if you take the past 10 days, I'd say, or maybe the past, I don't know, let's eight days, what, how many, how, 10 day, 10 is a number for me that I like to look at. And if you take a look at those, the, those past days, you will have a sense of what you're feeling, what you're experiencing. And it, I'm not talking about whether you are on one side of a party or the other. Because there is no distinction when people feel what they feel, they feel what they feel. Now, I'm not talking about behavior. I am talking about feelings. Because underneath all of this, there is something in the world that we talk about. We talk about what happens. But inside, we all have a sense of our lives, where we are, what will move us forward, and what will get us stuck. This show today is to help uncover some of the things that may not be obvious to you. Right, Mark? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And even if you're not tuned into the news, like Dr. Pat said, the frenetic energy of these turbulent and changing times are permeating our energetic field. And you're going to pick up on it. I, I was uh, doing a reading the other day for somebody. And she kept telling me that whenever she went in public, she uh, started getting so nervous and, and upset. And what it was, she was 16 years old and she was doing the reading with her mother uh, over the phone because I, you know, I, for minors, I, I um, have to make sure that their parent or legal guardian are accompanying them in the reading. And what became very apparent is that she's an empath and an empath is sort of like a uh, psychic sponge and empaths pick up on feelings and emotions of other people. And until you can understand what that is, you can think that you're having a nervous breakdown or, or a panic attack. Well, everyone may not be an empath, but everybody is empathic to, to some extent. And right now there's so much turmoil in the world. We have the pandemic, we have millions of people out of work, we have international strife, we have domestic strife, we have uh, uh, a new administration coming in. We have uh, you know, a lot of people happy about that, a lot of people unhappy about that, and everybody is on edge. And so what Dr. Pat and I want to do is to reassure you that human beings are built to handle adversity and even though you feel like you're in a canoe and you're going through rapids, that you're going to get through them. May a few bangs and bruises along the way, but you're going to get through it. And I, I think that, you know, we are compounded by something that in our lifetime has been complicated. You know, people point to and talk about the famous Einstein quote, you know, the one where he says, and everybody on the planet paraphrases him, you know, to the point where we don't know if he really said it or not, you know, talks about the idea of problem solving and talks about what did Einstein mean? And today, you know, one of the things I'm going to share is, you know, perhaps three different takeaways from Einstein's quote about lessons from Albert Einstein on problem solving. And, you know, he talks about, well, you can't solve them at the level they've been created. I mean, that's the short, you know, paraphrase version. But what does he say we do use to create them? And how does that apply to our everyday lives? Uh, Mark, we've got a lot of people waiting to chat and talk. And uh, what do you say we, why don't we hear what one of our fabulous audience has to say? What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Um, let's open up the phone lines. All right. Um, let's get Doris from Chicago. Can we do that, Jess? Oh, yeah, you bet. Doris from Chicago, you are on with Mark Anthony and Dr. Pat. Hey, Doris. Hi. Hi, Pat. Hi, Doctor. Um, listening, Pat, when you said about the last 10 days and emotions being brought up and in so many different ways, um, it has brought up tremendous, tremendous feelings inside of me uh, with family members. Uh, and I would like to uh, ask Dr. Anthony if he could mm -hmm. um, 
say anything, Mark, uh, mm-hmm. regarding my family, my lost family, of how especially the last 10 days have really brought up. Um, mm. Well, Doris, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my brain to higher frequencies and ask spirits associated with you to come through. And even though you have specific questions, they may bring up something else, but we always have to defer to the wisdom of the other side because they know what you need to hear and they very well may address that question. So let me see, Um, I'm picking up on a male energy connected with you. Now, when I say that he's on the level above you, that would mean the generation um, before us. Like he could be on the the parent uncle um, level, or it could be a friend that was older. And what I'm getting with him is prior to passing, I'm feeling this burning sensation in my lungs and I'm getting a lot of (coughs) coughing. And this feels like an emphysema, COPD, um, different medical conditions have a similar physical sensation, but I'm getting a lot of lung involvement with him. And I'm also getting a lot of discomfort in, in my gut, uh, just below the, the solar plexus area, a lot of pain in the stomach. And it feels like he may have had ulcerative colitis or he may have had some type of ulcer condition because I'm hearing the, the term ulcer, ulcerative. I'm getting a lot of abdominal um, issues and pain with him. Uh, prior to passing. And um, I'll tell you one thing, though, right up to the very end, uh, Doris, this this guy was sharp as a tack. He knew what was going on. Um, and even though uh, I feel that he was um, medicated, sedated for the pain to some extent, I get the sense that he didn't want the full, full uh, uh, dosage of pain medication uh, because he wanted to maintain his clarity. All right, I'm going to hold position here because he's giving me more stuff. Does anything, um, does this make sense to you? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, was that a, yes? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, all right, let's see what he wants you to know. All right, he's pulling me right to, um, I'm smiling because I'm smelling and tasting candy corn. Okay, and the only time you ever see candy corn, I guess, is right around Halloween. So what this indicates to me is this spirit is bringing up a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event, which might be connected with him or to you or someone close to you, which would be um, what I'm getting from him, your family, between October 20th and November 10th birth, death, anniversary, or event, because I call that the Halloween time frame. So that could be something about Halloween or that particular time frame. Does that resonate with you? Not sure. Oh, yes, it does, because he's throwing candy corn at me. Okay, <laughs> let me ask you this, Doris. When you think of Halloween, what comes to mind? Candy. Well, yeah, all right. Um, love Halloween, hate Halloween, or neutral about it? Halloween. Um indifferent okay so there's something in that time frame we haven't identified it just yet um and hold on hold on hold on he's talking about your finances and he said that they seem to be um teeter-tottering right now and that's the the word that he's using teeter-tottering now suffice it to say you know we're going through the pandemic and a lot of people are having a really rough time financially but he's telling me that you've always had a good head on your shoulders and despite what everybody around you has been saying to you he said that you are a woman of fortitude who always makes up her own mind and he's complimenting you because he's telling me that you always listen to what other people have to say but ultimately you make your own decision. And that is particularly significant to what's been going on with you for the last 10 days, because he feels like you're running through the streets of Jerusalem with the people all chasing you, yelling, stoner, stoner. Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay, I'll let you explain. In what way, yes? Well, um, I am one that does listen to other people, but... Uh, I make informed decisions myself with my finances uh, of what is best. Uh, And that's been going on the last couple of weeks, especially. Um, My dog, for example, wound up with cancer. I chose to do amputation um, and start chemo against everyone. No, no, no finances, financially, et cetera. And um, 
I did what I thought was best. Okay. So would you say that you're under a lot of uh, pressure from your family members in these last 10 days? Oh, yeah. well, one, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hold on. This gentleman is giving me something else now. Um, are you supposed to be getting some type of blood work, blood test, blood work, blood test? Because he keeps talking about blood work and blood test um, oh with you. God. And it feels like yeah. you either just had it or it's coming up pretty soon. Yes. Okay. Hold on. He said that you're monitoring the situation and not to fear because it's nowhere near as serious as you fear. Does that make sense? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> okay, good, good. And, you know, we're on air, so I don't want you to discuss your uh, personal right. um, medical. Um, but what it is, spirits being pure energy, they're able to, like, scan you, and they pick up on uh, energetic anomalies in your body, and that's how they're able to determine what's going on with you medically. And um, hold on. Um, is your mother here in this world? No. Okay. Because I keep getting mother, 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 all right? <clears throat> so let me shift over to her real quick. Do the two of you throughout your life have something of a tumultuous relationship and toward the end everything was fine? Yes. Okay. She wants you to know that she is very pleased that both of you and, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm laughing and smiling. And I know because your mother said, you know, the problem with us is we're so much alike. You're both really strong women. And both of you never like to admit that you're wrong. But then when it was important, you both did. And realized that you loved each other and love, present tense, um, each other more. The love between the two of you was more than the discord that had been through your past. So she's very thankful for that. Um, I think it's time for some intuitive street smart insights from the one and only hey. Dr. Pat. Hey, Doris, it's really great to connect with you. And I picked up on something immediately. First of all, Doris is my stepmom. And um, you've heard me probably maybe not talk about the fact that if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here today. Boy, what grit. Also, my stepsister is Dari. So the minute you came on, look, I spent, I don't want to say how long today, talking with someone, let me just say family, not going to call anybody out, talking with someone who clearly disagreed with my value system and what I believed. And in those moments, I don't think I'm alone. I think we have 80 million people across the board arguing about what they believe and another 80 arguing about what they believe. But what happens when it comes to family? What happens when your family all of a sudden doesn't think they, you're making the right decision? So here's what I want to say to you, Doris. Yahoo for you, sister because they you. do not know what's in your heart. Do you know what I'm saying? Thank you so much. They do not know what's in your heart. And I'm going to tell you, you're talking to like, you know, two peas in the pod. We're like in the pod. I got a collie who out of the gate, clearly inbred. And I spent the next 13 years buying my vet a brand new office, a giant Mercedes, and a new home. Even though everybody said, turn him back in. So what's in your heart? That is your guidance system. I've gone with that. And I thank you for, for confirming that it's okay. It's more than okay. It's more than okay regardless of the outcome, regardless of the outcome, it's more than okay. And you know in your heart there was no other option, none. Okay? I really, really needed that, Pat. 
There was no other you option. Have a good, healthy New Year, and boy. You thank too, you Doris. So Rock much. on. Thank you. Man, I'll tell you something. When you know in your heart, when you know in your heart decisions about things like that, even after you weigh in all the facts, that just sometimes you got to go with your guidance. Um, let's go to the phones. We got a very special and important caller that really needs to talk to you, Mark. Okay. Okay. Jessica, who uh, can you please connect us? Yeah, absolutely. We have Nina on the line from Florida. Nina, you're on the show. Hi, Nina. Hi, Nina. Hi. Hi, I got through. <laughs> yes, you did. Thank you. I've Take your time. Take your time. Yeah, yeah, Take Nina. Your time. Yeah, exactly. Take a deep breath, relax, and then tell us how, how can we help you. Yes. I just um, I had my son pass away four months ago. Okay. First off, he was my best friend, my best friend, we were so inseparable. I miss uh, him so much. Just Nina, life without him. We're. Please accept our condolences. No mother should have to endure that type of pain. Yeah. Um, well, let me see. Let me let's let's uh, let me open up to higher frequency and see if I can get him through. Okay. okay. Um, hold on. Okay, male energy coming through. Ow! And the reason that I'm shuddering like that is I pick up on how spirits passed and I'm feeling an impact sensation. And an impact sensation indicates to me that his passing was abrupt or could have been unexpected. Um, I'm also tasting um, a lot of blood. And here's the thing, Nina, I don't mean to get graphic or be upsetting, but this is how spirits no, communicate no. With, with me. They go through, there's a process that they do with me and they indicate to me um, symptoms and factors uh, related to their passing. Now, the, 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 the tasting of the blood doesn't necessarily mean there was a bleed out, could have been an internal hemorrhage. Um, but what I'm getting with him is that there was an abrupt, unexpected passing. And I'm getting that prior to his, his physical death, he was in a hyper um, emotional state, emotionally charged, very excited. It's like his wits, his mind were, was on full, full throttle. Um, and so he was very aware uh, of what, what he describes a clear and present danger. And it hit him so fast. And I'm getting, um, I'm, I feel like two hits to the face and one to the chest. Does that make any sense? The what? Sorry. I'm sorry. Did we lose you? Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, and if the you could, need to please speak up. He passed, he, he passed away in my arms. Like, like he crawled to my bed. And he just suddenly passed away. I, I, um, I did the CPR on him. You did the CPR. Oh, okay. Okay. What I'm thinking is with the two hits to the head and one to the chest, yeah. um, and based on what I'm feeling, this feels like some type of neurological um, reaction. And this could be like the um, stroke heart attack combo. Now, obviously he was young for a stroke, but it could have been an aneurysm, but I'm getting like two hits in the head. Now the two hits in the head, what that can be an indication of, there could be two aneurysms. He may have had brain tumors or it could have been something electrical within his brain. Mm -hmm. And then with the heart, the hit in the heart, it just feels like he went into cardiac arrest. So like he I'm getting two he hits did. and then cardiac arrest. And what he's yeah, explaining he to me is that he had a congenital heart defect and that his heart was ab um, like abnormally large and it feels like it was somewhat rotated. And the thing is, it appears that this really wasn't something that he was aware of, which makes sense because doctors wouldn't know this unless they specifically screen for it. So that's what he's telling me is that this was a congenital um, genetic, um, this was a genetic trait. D does that make any sense to you? Yeah, he had, um, his arm was paralyzing his hands. He couldn't hold the cell phone anymore he couldn't barely walk yeah he was going to see a neurosurgeon on monday yep. he passed away on sunday okay yeah i 
he, I think he did have an underlining. It's been four months, and the medical examiner still can't find anything. He, we're like, what happened? He says, I've been doing so much testing. So I wanted to ask my son what happened to you. Mm. Well, that, that's what he's explaining. There's a congenital defect of the heart and that the electrical system in his heart gave out and it was tied into something that was going on in his brain. So it could have actually even been something like mini strokes, which triggered um, this heart attack. He wants you to know that if he would have had any inkling that this was coming, he would have let you know ahead of time. Um, I know this is going to sound very odd, but he keeps showing images of like, you know how sometimes when you get a can open, you open a can and then you start eating whatever it is in the can out of the can. Does that make any sense to you? Um, yeah, did he sorry. did he eat out of a can? Or, like you know how you, people that go camping and hiking. Or or is or Nina, are you doing this? No, no. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't know what the can is. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah, he keeps showing me like opening up a can and just like eat like, you know, I've done that, like you open up a can of beans, you start eating the beans or whatever. But he keeps showing that. Mm. Uh, well, he sure did love me to do that, right? With the vegetables, cans, vegetables. <laughs> All right, you know, um, Nina, I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Yeah, I've got my volume. Low. Yeah. yeah it's, oh, um, it's okay. Is there any can way we can? Me now? Uh, yeah. Barely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jessica, is there any way you can boost her, her uh, volume? Yeah, no, she okay. she's on a low can frequency here. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I'll try to boost okay. her up too, and then Nina, if you can just really make sure you're talking into your phone, we'll yeah. we'll do our best. To My you, son, okay? yeah. Yeah, I have a can question for me? Nina too. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, My son, Hi. I, so it was a new new. It was a it was a brain thing. Or not? That's what he had, right? Because he kept telling me, "I I don't think I'm gonna live past 30. He always had that problem and a lot of headaches, a lot of headaches. And yeah, lot of remember headaches. I'm saying I felt two hits in the head and one in the heart. This um, feels like uh, there was electrical activity in the heart. I mean, excuse me, in the brain. Both the, the Your body is an electrical system and the most powerful electrical system in your body is your heart. The most sophisticated electrical system in your body is in your brain. And I'm getting two hits, two disruptions within his brain, and then one massive one in his heart. So that's what happened there. Okay. And, um, oh, certainly. Hey, um, he just handed me a bottle of, of, of Coors beer. Now, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but um, does Coors, C-O-O-R-S, beer make sense to you in any way? Or is there any connection with you, your son, with Colorado? With what? Colorado. Colorado. No. No. No beer, no. He was um, okay. actually a Hennessy kid. <laughs> well, oh, 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 he's a Hennessy my, kid. My kind of man. <laughs> well... The, the really thing didn't is, drink that much. Actually, he wasn't into alcohol. Right, <laughs> right, right. But I'm not drinker. saying you're the beer drinker. Okay. Um. Do, all right. Yeah, yeah. So when I bring things up, does that make sense to you in any way? Any connection with yes. you? Yes. In in what way? Um. Well, I used to um, like have. He never liked me to drink beer, or I'm a cancer survivor. He always used to take good care of me. And I used to drink beer, or, but I don't know about the cores. <laughs> well, let's go with They're the wine. beer. Um, maybe he's saying if you're going to drink beer, drink cores. I don't know. But, you know, Dr. Pat and I are not oh, doing a commercial yeah, for cores beer. Oh, that. the light beer. Yeah, it's like, you yeah. know, when you get pulled over by a cop and they, they, the cop says, well, how many beers do you have? And you're like, I'll have two yeah. beers, but they were light beers. <laughs> yeah, that, that never works. <laughs> you, made oh. you made me laugh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, uh, he, Nina. Is he, um, is he happy? Is, is he okay? Yes. I mean, yeah. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Nina. Certainly, you want to hear from him, but.
But with spirit communication, remember, the spirit's not on the witness stand and we're not cross-examining him, okay? You've got to let the <laughs> messages flow. You know, you're like, is he happy? <laughs> you know, and what happens there is you start putting <laughs> angst in the energetic field and it creates a barrier. But what he wants you to know, and uh, I guess we're getting a lot of candy tonight, but he's making me taste peppermint. Now, peppermint can mean a few different things. Um, it usually indicates something within the month of December because I associate it with, uh, you know, candy canes, but it could, you know, so it could be a birth, death, anniversary, or event connected you, your son, or someone close to you within the month of December. And um, it's a trigger for a name like Pat, Patrick, or Patricia that could be connected to you or him in some way. But I am tasting peppermint in the biggest way. And maybe you love or maybe you hate peppermint or candy canes, but that's what he is transmitting to me. He was a candy lover, a lot of candy. Candy lover. He did have candy lover. Okay. Oh, he was a candy lover. Yeah. He candy okay. Candy yeah. He, he does want you to know that he. Peppermint. Okay, he does want you to know that he is in the light, and he keeps showing me images of Saint Joseph, and. So I was raised Catholic and I get a lot of Catholic imagery in my visions and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the religion so much as the symbolism and St. Joseph, um, the way he's portraying him, uh, Joseph was looking over Mary and the baby Jesus and was a protective energy and um, put the interests of those he loved before those of his own and it's interesting the way your, your son is projecting to me St. Joseph, because basically he's in that role now of looking oh, over wow. you, watching out for you. Um, the other possible St. Joseph, are you moving or doing any type of remodeling or carpentry work? No, I'll be honest with you. I uh, gave up the apartment. I gave up my job and I'm, I'm roaming with his car. I have everything in storage. I have I have no, uh, I don't, I can't see anything ahead of me right now. All right, hold, hold on. When did you give up the apartment? Uh, I gave up right after he passed away. Okay, so yeah. that's what that indicates. I gave it up, but all right. When I get imagery of St. Joseph, what that indicates is like buying or selling a house or transferring real estate or moving. In other words, you gave up the apartment. Do you see see what I that means? Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. So he's acknowledging yeah. that uh, he is aware of that. Um, he said, worry not for me. Look to your own well-being. He's fine. He's in the light. Okay. I know, but and, I, can't, I, can't, I can't make my life without him. I miss yeah. him too much. I've never lived without him. He was my best friend. <laughs> well, well certainly, episode. all right, all right, Nina, certainly we understand that. I'm transmitting messages from him to you. And you have to realize in spirit <laughs> communication, um, and, and I'm not criticizing oh. you, I'm explaining. It's usually best to wait oh. about six months after the passing of a loved one to engage uh -huh. in spirit communication. And the reason for that, the spirits can communicate right away. It's the recipient because you need to get a stabilization in your life so that when you do engage in spirit communication you're not hysterical you're not you know on the verge of arguing with every piece of information that comes through because that's perfectly normal for you to do you're very upset now i mean you're a mom who lost her son okay but in spirit communication you've got to get to the point where you're not doing that so then you can get the maximum benefit of all the messages that are coming through, plus the subtleties and the nuances, you know, because a lot of times people are like, no, 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 no. Okay. And they're, they're missing <laughs> the subtleties that the spirit's communicating. Okay. So he wants you to right. know that he's in the light, he's at peace, he's watching over you, but his, his message to you is that you must look to yourself. Now, of course he was your best friend and, and, and you loved him so very much. But unfortunately, we all don't have the luxury of having those we care about and we love and that we feel that we need in our lives forever. Why? Because we're living in the material world and nothing here is forever. And, and nothing is more painful and devastating for, uh, for someone than to lose a child. And unfortunately, 
that is the the cold hard reality that you're dealing with but he's right. communicating that he knows that you're going to eventually begin to emerge from this pit of despair and find a new normal now the the, okay. the difficulty there is you know people are like so when's that going to happen <laughs> you know it's not like <laughs> grief yeah don't we all wish grief had an expiration date and it doesn't so it's it's going to take time and this is very courageous of you to reach out and engage in spirit communication because this is a step on the lifelong journey through grief um dr pat hey uh i'm gonna make it quickly because i know a bunch of people waiting but i want to just give you some insight um mark, I'm, uh, real quick mark and mark i have i have ordered your book for the first time and um, it's helping me a lot. Thank you very much for that. Thank, thank you. Yes, yeah, start with Never Letting Go. Never Letting Go, the blue one. That's um, the one I started with. Yeah, yeah. Start with Never Letting Go because that's written for the state you're in right now. It's the journey through grief. Right. And then Evidence of Eternity, evidence of eternity. Is, is right, the next step. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Pat, did, we didn't mean You know what? Okay. I think I'm good. Thank I you, think Doctor. we're just going to let you. Nina just rock on with, with this. And uh, Jessica, what do you say we take a short break? And then when we come back, we'll get to the rest of the callers, right? What do you say? I'm looking forward to All it. Right, All right, good. good. Let's go ahead and do it. Thanks, Jess. We'll be right back, everybody. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Psychic and the Doc. And guess what? We're here every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, um, 7 p.m. Eastern time, and then all the other times in between on TransformationTalkRadio.com. A couple ways that you can find us and listen to us and call in and do a whole bunch of stuff. And I think Jessica may be monitoring Facebook as well. I'm going to leave that up to her. And I know Linda's answering the phones. Good job to you both. Um, please, Transformation Talk Radio, Facebook, Transformation Talk Radio. Um, also on our website, transformationtalkradio.com. You can even ask a question there. Um, Mark and I do this every Thursday. And right now, we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to hop on over to the phones. Jessica. All right. You have Crystal calling in from, uh, I believe this is North Carolina. NC. All right. All right, Crystal. Hey, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so uh, like most everybody else, the past year has been crazy and really disturbing <laughs> in some, <laughs> some regards. And so I've, I've been struggling personally at work, um, trying to figure out where I fit in. And then I've had some issues with my family as well and health issues. And so I just wanted to see what you're picking up on. <laughs> Well, let's open up to, let me open up to spirits and see who comes forward. All right. Um, wow, you got a bunch of folks on the other side and male energy coming through. Now, this guy, he looks like he was thinner, uh, had a thinner build and he had like real pronounced Adam's apple, darker hair, angular features. And I feel this clamping sensation around my throat. Now, I don't want to jump to any conclusions just yet, but I'm getting this um, burning sensation in my throat, um, but I'm also getting swollen lymph glands and I'm getting a draining sensation mm -hmm. throughout my body. So what that can indicate, the draining sensation usually is an indicator that his passing was not quick, that he had a type of illness that just sort of drained uh, his life force one step at a time. The burning sensation is usually consistent with cancer. And now my lungs feel like they're on fire. So uh, burning sensations also tend uh, to indicate um, cancerous conditions. It doesn't always mean cancer, but, but it could. Um, and based on the physical sensations that I'm getting from him, also I'm feeling this in my bones. It feels like this man uh, did have some type of cancerous condition, which metastasized and it like exploded throughout his body. The thing though, is crystal he wasn't that old when he passed i'm trying to get a fix on on uh, his i'm sorry that was a dog oh okay i'm trying to get um a fix on on uh, his age um could have been like late 30s early 40s um based on based on um the, his physical appearance does this make sense to you in any way 
Yeah, it does. Okay. What? Don't give me his name or biographical data, but just what was his relationship to you? Stepfather. Okay. Hold on. You, the two of you used to talk quite a bit. And what's interesting here, I don't get like super love close. I mean, you guys liked each other and I'd say even loved each other, but you had an interesting, if not complex relationship. And it seems like the two of you actually had in-depth discussions with each other. Does that make sense to you? It does, yeah. Okay. Well, he's the one that wants to give you some advice. He says your family's crazy. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, for all the audience, show of hands of everyone from a functional family. No, but... <laughs> But, um, and you know, it is, he goes, they're crazy, but you gotta love them. He goes, your family's crazy, mm -hmm. but you gotta love them. Okay. Um, he's also telling me that you've outgrown your need for validation with them and that you don't need to be looking to them for your approval or, or yeah, for, for their approval for you. He said, you're the one that needs to get the validation for you. He's also very concerned about what's going on with you physically. And he keeps talking about like, you feel like you're tired a lot and that there's some type of protein iron um, deficiency. Does this make any sense to you? Yeah. Okay. He says, and you know how to deal with it. You're just not. Okay. What, what's that all about? Well, I've, I've got a, a couple medical tests out there that are pending um, where they found some stuff that are kind of concerning, concerning about my health. Um, and, and, and so I think that might be what it's about. Yeah, it seems to be very tied into protein um, and iron metabolization because it seems like uh, from, from what the, he's telling me that it, it's just sapping your energy. It's just sapping your energy. And he's also telling me that um, this is going to be corrected, but it's going to take the, uh, the better part of, of this year to get where you're feeling, he said, fresh again. Okay. And Irish spring. I'm, I'm, he's holding up a bar of Irish spring. Does that, <laughs> so does that make any sense with you? Um, he, he was um, of Irish ancestry. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so we'll take a yes on that. So let me explain why that's okay. so important. When the spirit gives me a message of an explanatory or advisory nature, and the explanation, the mm -hmm. advice was about your medical condition, and it's going to take the better part of a year, but you're going to get a handle on it. Okay. So that's the advice and explanation. And then when they followed up with an objectively verifiable fact, he gave me a symbol of Irish you know, Irish spring, and he was of Irish heritage, that verifiable fact is how the spirits letting you and I know that we've properly received and interpreted the message. He said, when it comes to your employment, you just have to suck it up and deal with it. He said, because they're not handing out jobs, right? <laughs> So he said, whether you like it or not, just do it. He said, it's like you're walking around with a whole basket full of dirty diapers and the stench is overwhelming. He goes, guess what? It's going to be that way until it isn't anymore. And what he's telling me, well, he's very graphic in the way he describes things. Um, was he, he was like that here, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very I mean, the whole dirty diaper thing's like, eh. But, um, he, <laughs> but the thing is, what he's telling me is that the reason he's using the diaper analogy is that's something that's not really pleasant, but people have to do it. They have to put up with it. They have to endure it. And he's telling me that not for you not to worry or be concerned about any type of career changes until it feels like um, the Virgo time frame, which would be toward the end of um, August, be like August 22nd through September 22nd, Virgo time frame is significant for you. There could be births, deaths, anniversaries, or events connected to you or him or someone close to you within Virgo, but it feels to me that this coming Virgo time frame in 2021 is going to be the biggie for you. Okay. 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 Dr. Pat, you have anything to add? No, I think I'm good. I think you just pretty much have summed it up and, uh, Boy, I'll tell you, you know, there's a lot of wisdom in putting a smile on your face sometimes and finding a moment where you can 
basically remember that light inside. And it sounds like you've got that covered. Thank you for calling in. Awesome. Um, Jessica, what do you think? One more? Yeah, let's do one more. We've got time for that. Um, okay. Let's go to Lynn in California. Uh, Hi, Lynn. Lynn. Hey, Lynn. Lynn, you're on the show with Mark Anthony and Dr. Pat. Hi, Lynn. I'm sorry. Oh, hi. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I, is, I am enjoying this discussion. Is the sun out? Where I am, yes. <laughs> Just want to <laughs> ask. I, I'm in the greater Seattle area. I don't remember what the sun looks like. Just saying. I know. You guys get a lot of rain. Southern California has been beautiful. So uh, I always try and look at the bright side. And uh, the thank weather you. has been part of that. And I'm... So thrilled to talk with you. Go and ahead. Mark. Yeah, You're good go people. for it. Well, well, thank you, Lynn. What can we help you with? Oh, golly. Uh, well, it's been, I've enjoyed the discussions. And, yeah, we're all going through a lot right now. And I'm, I'm very grateful that I come from a family of survivors and people who always try and, well, they've passed. But um, my family was always so wonderful at helping other people. And I've sort of made it my goal to help other people get through what we're all going through right now. Um, I'm doing great. I'm healthy. I'm doing well financially and emotionally, and I try and help other people. They don't always appreciate that and don't agree with my thoughts on things, but um, I'm working at it and, um, you know, just trying to stay positive and help everybody else get through this and help myself get through this. I, is anybody on the other side interested in talking with me? All right. First off, Lynn, deep breath and relax. Okay. Okay. Um, you got it. And let me see if I can get one of your folks to come through. All right. Um, is a name like, I know this sounds odd, but I keep hearing like, um, it could be Jeffrey. It almost sounds like Jethro, but there's a male energy around you. It keeps projecting to me. It could be a Jeff, Jeffrey, a Jethro um, type of name. Does this make any sense to you? Um, not right now, but I'll, I'll give it some thought. No. Oh, okay. I want you to write that down or make a note of that because I keep getting, okay. uh, it's so weird. Um, do you remember there was a rock group? I guess there still is a rock group, Jethro Tull. Do you remember oh, yeah. that? Oh, yeah. All right. Because now they're holding up the Aqualung album. Does Jethro Tull <laughs> make any sense to you? Uh, no. I mean, I enjoyed the music, but no. Well, that's a yes. If you enjoyed the music, <laughs> that's, that's a my yes. Day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my so, day. so hold on, hold on. Um, okay. The male energy that's communicating, and he feels like he is on the level above you, which would indicate the parent level. Um, mm. And what I get with him is I'm feeling all these pains in my joints, and I'm feeling pains in my teeth. And it feels like his body uh, was um, a lot of physical pain. Feels like he was riddled with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, it could be something else that that feels like that. Perhaps some type of uh, paralysis. But it really feels like he had a lot of arthritic conditions with him. Actually, this guy was quite elderly when he passed. I'm getting um, around late 80s, early 90s. So he may be a grandfather uh, figure to you. And uh, what I'm getting about him is a man of deep faith. I don't think that he rammed it down people's throats, but he was a man of deep faith because he's holding up, um, um, a, it could be a Bible, it could be a Torah, but it looks like um, definitely a book of scripture. Does this make any sense to you? Um, well, my father has passed and he, he passed in 1983. And uh, he was a good man, um, and, um, you know, we're Catholic. But um, that's the only person I can think of. I didn't know my grandparents. Do you know if your father, I assume he wasn't in his 80s if he passed in 1983. Yeah, he was 64. Okay. No, this gentleman feels like he's connected to you through your mother's side of the family. And you said you don't know anything about your grandparents? Well, my, my uh, grandparents passed quite a bit before the time period you gave me. 
Oh, I wonder if it was my... There was go a ahead. Jack. Here we go. All right, keep going. My, my cousin. But, he's, but he passed away about 10 years ago. Did he look a lot older than he was and real frail when he passed? Uh, he, he had... Uh, he, it, it could be, yeah. I mean, he, he was not well for a long time. What, what did he die from? Gosh, a variety of things. He was a police officer. He got into a motorcycle accident, and the medications he took kind of ruined his organs, you know, um, taking it, um, you know, things. There, there we go. Yeah, we're seeing oh, a lot yeah, of physical pain. There we go. Okay. Oh, my see, God. See, it takes time. It takes time. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's see what he wants you to know. He said, you got it all figured out. You don't need anyone telling you anything. He said, you're not going to listen anyway. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Like oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and but actually, though, he's not being critical. He said I that know. you, you, um, what's that expression when you, um, so the sound of your own drum, uh, what, what is that expression? Yeah, the Dr. Pat. The beat yeah, of my the, own drum. Or the something. beat of your own drum. Yeah. Yeah, he said that that you've always been that way, and he said that you're also very intuitive. But the problem is, when you feel the presence of spirits around you, you immediately block it because you start overthinking it and questioning it so much. So his you advice to you is let's his advice to you is let's stop doing that. So when you feel the presence of a spirit or present presence of a spirit or spirits around you instead of immediately subjecting it to the third degree just to take a pause listen and go with what comes to your heart so that's what he wants you to know of spirits often I well do. a lot I of mean, people do and the problem is that in our logical 21st century hyper tech you know technical world we tend to dismiss it or overanalyze it. You know, I remember in an ancient time before caller ID and the phone would ring and I'd know who it was. Okay, now we pretty much always know who it is because our phone <laughs> tells us. And so what's happened is a lot of the technology that we've developed is creating walls around our, our spiritual and intuitive nature. So what he's telling you is to start relying more on that and take the analysis out of it. Oh, he was a blessing. Is there one question I can ask you? We have sure. about 30 seconds. Okay. So real quick, see, 10 words or less. Do you see a young spirit like a baby on the other side from our family? Well, see, when you say that, now that's in my mind, so the answer would be yes. Okay, so if I did a one-on-one -on -one reading for you, I'm able to open up and I can see all the spirits, because in readings, in one-on-one -on -one readings, you're going to get more than one person coming through. So mm -hmm. um, you may want to consider, you know, doing a one-on-one. -on -one. And if well, people want to find people out how to do that, Mark. Yep. Go to my oh, website. Folks. I'm sorry. Okay. My, my website, evidenceofeternity.com. And please, I invite everybody to go to my website, evidenceofeternity.com. And you can find out about readings, my books, and sign up for my newsletter because um, I send it out or my team sends it out every week and it'll keep you up to date on the psychic and the doc and who we're going to have on when there's call-in shows and uh, other things that dr pat and i have coming up thank you cool thank, yeah thank you thank so you. much for calling in thank you hey i want to thank everybody for tuning in and turning us on and thank you all for calling in and for those of you folks that didn't get on to connect tonight we're going to be here next week please don't give up on us We've got some plans in the works to make sure that we do things a lot quicker, get through things we need to get through, and maybe somewhere in the future, maybe we'll add more time on. Let's say Happy New Year to everyone, and remember this, you do matter. You're an amazing being, and we'll see you next time.